want more details. The next thing that I'll say is that obviously, you know, it's been quite a last three months. There's pretty much no one that I've run into that hasn't experienced some level of turbulence as we go into some kind of grand, uh, some say it's a planetary alignment, some say it's cosmic, uh, some say it's just most necessary. I feel kind of it's a mixture of all of those and it's basically where we're now really seeing that we have to make these decisions in our lives to determine what we're going to be doing next, how we're going to be functioning on this planetary plane, and in what condition we're going to function and if we're going to be conscious people. Because one thing that I did also notice is, is there are regular sleepers, I call them the plutoniums, those are the, that are the furthest away from the source, didn't seem to be experiencing much of any change because it's always chaotic for them, a chaos that they've grown uh quite resilient to, I'll say, versus those who have drawn closer to their source or closer to their soul have experienced the changes and the, what I'll say is the turbulence even that occurs within their consciousness and also within people around them when that major change is, is taking place. And so we've had people around us that have literally become planetary resonators. And in that, they've some have come off balance and some have crashed into our world and others have left or jettisoned themselves into other orbits. And so we've all been experiencing this. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about what causes that and also how to begin to navigate those kind of fields and also avoid, avoid it entirely. And I feel like that this message is very precious. And for those that are listening today, this is something that's especially for you because we have a very synchronistic connection. And that connection really allows us to begin to experience the same things and, and very unique parallels. And that allows us to share uh, based on experience. So that way we have answers and responses based on experience. So what I've uh, always used as uh, a personal uh, defense against when something may happen that may just throw my life offline is I tend to come back harder. I've kind of always been the individual that, okay, if you're going to turn up the fire, then we're going to see who's going to burn up first. And that to me is, is most necessary when you're delivering this kind of message because there'll be all types of turbulence and things that attempt to to cease, allow you to cease and desist. And I think that everyone experiences that in their life in some way, that we have challenges and we're encouraged either to quit because there is an encouragement to quit or we can encourage ourselves to actually go stronger. So I've always been the type that just goes stronger in it. So this is a this is a prelude to that. And as I said, I'm getting warmed up here. And what I intend to do, not only today, but henceforth, is once again launch the all-famous content war. And for those who are familiar with my message, remember years ago, there was literally an effort that we went on to begin to push out more conscious information on the higher caliper. And at a certain point, we did literally have so much information out on the internet about the real stuff, Kundalini, Third Eye Awakenings, those kind of things. I felt that we had won that content war, and indeed we did. But now I feel like there's a new change in things as Earth is constantly changing and our existence is constantly changing. And so it demands of us to adjust our message, just as messages from three or four thousand years ago have to become more innovative to the times that we're living in. So for me, it's time to launch that again. And this is, to me, I use the term war because there's disinformation out there, meaning that there's literal lies that others uh, put out and some people study things and don't come to the right conclusion and you know how it works so there's a lot of information that can kind of cloud the judgment of others who are looking to get information that's that's spot on and correct about what they may be looking into so we're going to begin to bring out more of that truth so it's ideal that we do that through truth frequency radio so that way we can really start to narrow uh things as far as the confusion and get rid of the confusion entirely so i'm going to start today by talking about what has really been going on in the planetary system that has caused this major influx? And what I what I will say before I talk about that, though, is that change is conflict. And I'll say that once again, change is conflict. That the moment that something needs to change, generally there's some type of friction that occurs before that to make it change. Even when you switch the light on, there's a friction that goes on between the, the terminals. There's a friction that goes on between even the plastic. So that friction is, it causes a change. So anything that you're looking at 
in life, you can see now if it's causing you a conflict that there's a change that is necessary. And we're encouraged to face those changes, seeing that we're constantly in a changing environment. Uh, millions, if not billions of cells die in the body every day just to change you into what you're yet to become. But never let anyone narrow you down to something that's simple or, or something that what I would say is um, repetitive or something that doesn't have value and something that's unique. Right? We are all very, very unique. So never let anyone tell you that you don't have something very unique going on with you. There's no one size fits all in this. You have to find exactly how you can align yourself with your higher truth to experience what you need to experience in this reality. And the only thing that we offer is we offer great advice based on experience and also based on things that we've learned every day and in our lives through spiritual journeys and through physical journeys that have helped us traverse the same terrain that you're traveling yourself. So for me, it's also been, uh, I guess this is now the sixth or seventh year of looking deep into the occult nature of the reality. This comes from symbols, this comes from religious structures, this comes from secret societies, this comes from either even science, it comes from fringe. So I've gathered all this information and also this experience to make more of an innovative approach to how we perceive what's going on in this reality because let's just face it no one with uh, a presidential authority let's say or has a real title has actually come forward and said hey this is how we got here this is the meaning to life it's always left as a mystery while most of these stations and these these larger uh, factions and groups only focus on just the minute uh, problems of day-to-day -day life which seem to be rather repetitive so it it, it does take courage to go out every single day or every single moment in your consciousness to find something new and to find the meaning of things when the mass majority around you have no clue and don't want to have a clue about it. And so one of the major things that I've noticed is, is that there's been a release of this energy that can be called dark matter energy into our reality. And that is what has shaken things up a bit. So if you're looking for a specific reason to why, hey, why does it seem to be more chaotic? Why is there so much energy flying around? And it's because there's a lot of dark matter energy that is floating around and few know how to utilize that energy. So we're going to talk about that tonight because obviously the dark matter energy is something that the ancients were more familiar with and utilized in their creation process. In fact, it was the beginning of the creation process. It is the material that's used to begin the creation. It's the rough cut stone, if you may. And so what I found out is, is that this dark matter energy for us mainly translates into what we call sexual energy. It's very deep. It involves the creative force. So we can see in our world that clearly there is a great misuse of the sexual energy as it is a great misuse of our creative energy. Meaning that if you look into military industrial complex and even the science and laboratories, big pharma, big chemo, all this knowledge that they've discovered about the plants and the animals and the minerals and the elements have been abused and misused to create things that harm us and addict us. And so that creative energy is being misused. And that's been going on for a while. But what happens when you get so much of that energy? And then it begins to fill up the entire environment and it can, in a certain tense, become maddening. So we can actually turn to the body. We can turn to situations that people experience in everyday life. If you don't experience them personally, you will know someone who's experiencing this to get real answers to how you balance out these energies and also to confirm what I'm telling you today is actually true. And today, actually, we're going to start, I'm going to explain this uh, through a theory that I've uh, uncovered that I just call the cannabis theory. And I find it rather relative because there's a lot of um, cannabis use going on in the reality right now. And as you can see, the government is beginning to endorse it. And on all of the major uh, outlets, you see it on CNN. And so we always have known that any time uh, the governments begin to endorse something, maybe we need to take a closer look at it and to see whether it's in our favor 
or not in our favor. And today I'm not actually here to tell you what you should and should not be doing. I'm here to just lend a couple suggestions so that you can understand, or as I say, understand things better. So that way you can get through your experience as smooth as possible. So the cannabis theory begins with understanding exactly what the plant is and what it actually causes within the body and within your structure and your consciousness. What makes uh, what allows cannabis to make people more creative because there's a numerous amount of people almost countless that have invented things like uh, music and logos and even grand theories and lots of the, those kind of uh, what I would say innovative approaches and inventions into the reality with the use of cannabis and so when we look under the fibers of it literally what we find is is that cannabis is actually a female plant that the plant that people smoke is the female. The male, obviously, is hemp. And this female's process is actually a process of yearning, meaning that the cannabis plant actually is yearning to pollinate or yearning to actually populate and create with the male plant, which is actually absent. Any person who's ever grown weed knows that the first thing you do is never allow any male plants to be around the female plants. So what happens is, is that if you can see this plant on an energetic level, what you would actually see is the divine feminine itself. And that's why I think it's always been given names that are synonymous with the ocean, synonymous with the female, Mary, and uh, Mar, Ma, and all of those acronyms. And this is very important for us to realize because that means that for those who choose to utilize cannabis, it means that they're filling their body with the divine feminine. And this is often why cannabis is often used to sort of patch the hole in people's reality of where they're not getting that divine feminine energy. Cannabis can become somewhat of a panacea or cure-all for people's situations and things that they're dealing with in life. If they're experiencing anxiety, they may smoke cannabis. If they're bored, they may smoke, smoke cannabis. If they feel uncreative and dull, they may smoke cannabis. And so what happens is, is the reason why this plant has become so popular in use is because the reality itself in our interactions with the organic feminine forces has been at an all-time low. And the one thing I'll say is that this is not a male and a female thing. I want you to understand that the divine feminine is goes much more further than just the human female. As we've talked about, it's even the, the cat has a female. Even we see plants have a female. We see frogs, there's females. So it's what's behind those eyes, the force that's behind those eyes that we're talking about, that fills up every single body, whether you're quote unquote a male human or female human. So at any point where we lack that divine feminine force, whether it's the, the love from uh, our mother or our grandmother, whether it's the love from a significant other, and what we even see in a moment is whether it's the lack of creativity at any aspect, whether that's having a child or having your, what we would say is a, a project that you're passionate about. When you lack that, you may seek to fill that hole with something like cannabis. Now this goes into something bigger. I'm just giving, it's called the cannabis theory because it could be applied to anything that incorporates the divine feminine and the divine masculine force. So you can see how these days you have this excessive use of this substance that's filling people's body with this creative force, i.e. dark matter. Because the dark matter is the womb. It cultivates. It creates. Okay? And so it's the exact same force that we use to create. So what happens if we get filled with this force, but we're not creative? This means that we've gotten full of something, but there's no outlet. So what you see in the industry now is, which is why they're encouraging the use of cannabis use, is that you see that the animalistic instinct, which is the root to our creation, it is our, the foreground, if you may, it's the soil that we grow from. It's also what we will progress back to in the event that we don't fully utilize our human ability. So this is why 
excessive cannabis use also leads to a person being much more sexual and wanting to populate with someone else. And it leads to like the music you see today, it's basically as one song even, they just put it in the title, it's just marijuana and women. And again, because this is not partial to a male or female, it could be for the female, just marijuana and men. So how do you balance out this type of energy? Well, it's very simple. What we'll find is, is that within every human being, there is the ability that we've been endowed with, which is to be more creative than just people who reproduce. You know, as the first command is reproduce or be fruitful and multiply. But as human beings with this great mind and consciousness that we have, we now have this ability to invent. We can paint, we can play music, we can print things, you know, there's 3D printing. There's many different things that we can begin to engage in that actually are other expressions of our creative force. But if you lack that, if you lack that outlet, what can happen is you will become bottled up. You will yearn for something. Notice how if someone says to you, well, what is your passion? That can relate to your significant other. Well, you know, I'm passionately in love with her or I'm passionately in love with him. Or it could relate to your craft. You could paint. He's a passionate painter. She's a passionate designer. So be on watch for this. And like I said, it's not just cannabis. It's just the cannabis theory. It gives us a, a good uh, uh, stamp to put on it. So that way we recognize it in other, uh, other aspects. Because we can find that we will begin to abuse certain things or overuse certain things. We can even do that with each other. You could be, you could make a person your cannabis. Every time you feel anxiety, you call them. Every time you're hurt, you call them. Every time you're bored, you call them. But what's really being desired is that you tap into that creative force and begin to create something within. So that way you become addicted to self. You see, so that, so this is what this is about. This is the prelude to today's conversation. And it's about how to examine what's really going on in this reality because I feel like there's so much information that's way over people's head. It's become just entertainment. They just listen to it and they even sit down and smoke a little cannabis <laughs> and just listen to the message and take it all in. But where's your outlet? How are you utilizing this? Is it allowing you to develop something that's grand in your invention? Is it giving you the passion to continue your own projects and your own endeavors with what you're doing in this world? Or is it bottling all up? Is it frustrating you? Is it making you feel that it's too much because it's overwhelming and it's not being distributed properly? You see? So this connects into many things about how we utilize our energy and also how we begin to step into the role of the ancients the ancestors to begin to use this force to do more than just reproduce sexually and begin to create and invent again to stop looking to all of these uh, technologies, technology and these computers and the next new buggy model or the next new update to something and become the ones who invent because if I look right now and I say, well, I need to find some type of real uh, uh, application for my child to begin to learn about the mechanics of this reality through the geometry in which nature emits. So that way they're not getting indoctrinated through this system and, and, and this history that has been fabricated in this English language and all this kind of stuff that's been rolled in. Where can I go on the, on the web to, to find that? I won't find it. I may find something that's been half-heartedly put together and not finished, but I won't find anything complete. Not to mention, I won't find lots of it. 
So that way there's no monopoly on one particular faction that's just delivering this information that's saying, hey, this is for your child, like it's a cookie cutter. I won't find all the variations from different cultures and different experiences so that way it harmonizes more with where I come from and where she or he comes from, okay? So this is because lots of this creative force is bottled up within everyone. And now today, I'm encouraging you to begin to take this message, to take these energies that you're utilizing and to question how much of it is bottling up and then how much of it is actually being put into use because the future what the future holds for us is determined by you remember a few people invented what millions of people are using today so if more of us begin to utilize the creative force in the proper way and we begin and we can begin to finish much of the projects that are still on the drawing board haven't been complete so we're going to take a break here in about a minute when we come back we're going to talk about the mega structure we're going to talk about the reincarnation process we're going to talk about what actually happens to us if we choose not to be creative this lifetime and then we're also going to talk about what's going to happen when we choose to be creative. So that way we can begin to reinstill this force within us that's going to carry us to the great beyond. So this is very imperative. This is a serious conversation. This is a depth level as it can get because it involves real life. It's not just about telling you about a bunch of hocus pocus and numbers and sigils and space time and inventions and time machines it's about telling you about how you can progress in real time right now based on the elements around you and how also to put your body back into balance so that way you can become a fully animated being and so you can see beyond time and see beyond space and then see yourself there and then connect with what that is so we're going to be going into this break. I wanted to say again, thank you to all the listeners and to those out there that have tuned in and have plugged themselves into this collective that we all are a part of in order to share a much greater level of knowledge with each other. So we're back 